Six years ago, Noam Chomsky called the rise of Donald Trump. This is absolutely amazing. Here's what he said. This is from Truth Dig. He argued, quote, The United States is extremely lucky that no honest, charismatic figure has arisen. Every charismatic figure is such an obvious crook that he destroys himself, like McCarthy or Nixon or the evangelist preachers. If somebody comes along who is charismatic and honest, this country is in real trouble because of the frustration, disillusionment, the justified anger, and the absence of any coherent response. What are people supposed to think if someone says, I've got an answer. We have an enemy. Uh, there, it was the Jews. Here will be the illegal immigrants and the blacks. We will be told that white males are a persecuted minority. We will be told that we have to defend ourselves and the honor of the nation. Military force will be exalted. People will be beaten up. This could become an overwhelming force. And if it happens, it will be more dangerous than Germany. The United States is the world power. Germany was powerful, but had more powerful antagonists. I don't think all this is very far away. If the polls are accurate, it is not the Republicans, but the right-wing Republicans, the crazed Republicans, who will sweep the next election. There it is. The guy saw it coming. Now, you take this quote, you tell it to people before Trump got elected, before Trump won the primary even, let's say. They would laugh you out of the building. Any of the establishment media types. <laughs> now, look, I was warning you about it too. He laid it out in much more detail than I laid it out. But I told you guys, I don't, I said, I don't know why people aren't taking Trump seriously. Donald Trump, oh, he's not going to run. Then he ran. Oh, but he's not going to debate. Then he debated. Oh, he's not going to win the debates. He won the first debate. He's not going to win the second debate. He won the second debate. Right there. That's immediately. I was, oh, no, no. Okay, now this is serious. He He's running. He's in the debates. He won the first two debates. Now it's serious. Now he's leading in the polls. Now he's leading in the polls. This is serious. By definition, it's serious. He's leading in the polls. Now oh, he'll have his day in the sun, and then he'll go away, and that'll be the end of that. Don't worry, he'll never win a single contest. He'll never win a primary or a caucus. Oh, shit, he won. He'll never win multiple. Oh, he won multiple. He'll never win the nomination. He won the nomination. Every step of the way, every warning sign, it's real, it's real, it's real, it's real, it's real. And then still, we still heard it. Hillary Clinton has it on lock. He has it on lock. The election's over. It is over. There's no way he wins. I told you it was possible. I told you. Now it happened. Noam Chomsky saw it coming even earlier. He saw it coming because of there's no more faith in the institutions. Guys, it's all laid out in front of us. The evidence is right there. Did you know Congress had a 9% approval rating? You can just elect Congress. Hey, we just picked you. We like you. We just picked all you guys. A month later, 9% approval rating, 12% approval rating. How can that be? It's because the system is broken and people know it. They know, okay, I just picked a lesser of two evils. So when they get there, they all immediately sell out. They all immediately do the bidding of Wall Street and the military industrial complex and snub the people, the constituents who put them there, who it's their job to, to fight for and take care of and pass legislation on behalf of. So everybody knows it's a ruse. Everybody gets it. Everybody's hurting. From the 1980s and onward, there has been no increase in middle class wages. It's been stagnant. How can that be? Meanwhile, corporate profits are through the fucking roof. Money now totally engulfs our political landscape. The politicians are just taking care of their special interests. The billionaires, the corporations, they don't care about you. People know this. The elites, you know, pass, oh, pass NAFTA, nothing will happen. Oh, the WTO, do that, nothing will happen. Pass CAFTA, nothing will happen. P pass permanent normal trade relations with China, oh, it'll be okay. Sure, we're, sl we're shipping out millions of formerly middle-class jobs, factory jobs overseas. Sure, you're depressing the economy for middle America. Sure, you're making people really angry. Man, so don't worry, nothing will happen. We got it under control. You know, corporate, corporate professors are good. My bank account is good. The cocktail parties I'm at in Washington with the elites, everything's good. We can pull the wool over everybody's eyes. It'll be all right. It's not all right. They're sick of it. People are tired, man. 
and they just did the human equivalent, and Michael Moore made this point, a bunch of other people made this point. They view Donald Trump as a Molotov cocktail, human Molotov cocktail that they're going to throw at the establishment. They're going to throw a rock through the window of the establishment. They're going to slash some tires. They're going to, this is a revolution without firing a shot. That's what it is. Now, unfortunately, it was a populist rhetoric from the right. So now you don't just get, you know, an actual revolution for the people like Bernie Sanders would have offered where, okay, let's bring back factory jobs and let's look out for the people. Let's get universal health care and universal college. And let's not have xenophobia and bigotry and scapegoat the other, whether it's Muslims or blacks or Mexicans. You, don't, you wouldn't have gotten the bad part from Bernie Sanders, but from Donald Trump. First of all, you don't even know if he's going to do the populist stuff. I would guess he absolutely is not going to do the populist stuff. He's going to be a standard right-winger. But then you also get the heaping dose of open, blatant, brazen bigotry. Ban all Muslims from coming to the U.S. Deport all undocumented immigrants. Be vicious in your treatment of minorities. Law and order. Bring back nationwide stop and frisk. Noam Chomsky saw it coming. He said, I'm surprised it hadn't already happened. And because the establishment is so disconnected, they think everything is hunky-dory. Run Hillary Clinton, a representative of the establishment and insider corruption, because people are cool with it. <laughs> no, they weren't. They were nowhere near cool with it. And now you made your bed and you're going to fucking sleep in it. He said it. The crazed Republicans will sweep the next election. That's exactly what we saw. There's another clip. I should have actually queued it up for this segment. We covered it a while back. The, he goes after the off-the-spectrum Republicans, and he specifically argues, no, 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 you don't get it. The establishment used to be able to corral the, the nativists, the white nationalists, the evangelical Christians, the far-right extremists, the sovereign citizen types. They used to be able to corral them to rally behind the establishment candidate. They're now losing control. You saw the signs in the 2012 election. Oh my God, Michelle Bachman is leading in the Republican primary for a little bit. She fell off. Oh my God, Newt Gingrich, who's crazy, is leading the Republican primary. Oh, Herman Cain is leading. This is the fluctuation of a group of people who are shopping around for the revolution. He said, off the spectrum Republicans, watch out. It's as dangerous as it gets. He kept warning. He kept warning. Smart people kept warning, kept warning. You didn't listen. If you ran Bernie Sanders in the, in the general, you could have kneecapped the revolution because you could have had an actual revolution good for everybody. But you didn't. You didn't. They went with establishment politics. And at the end of the day, the anti-establishment character ended up overthrowing it and unfortunately, the ideas that are there and the philosophy that's there in place of it, to the extent we can discern what it is, is ugly. So, look out. Things are about to get real wild. What's happened over the past roughly 40 years is that both parties have shifted to the right. Uh, the Democrats are essentially what used to be called moderate Republicans. The Republicans are just off the spectrum. They're not a parliamentary party anymore. And that's actually recognized by uh, leading conservative analysts. The most, one of the most respected of them, uh, the Norman Ornstein, American Enterprise Institute, uh, describes the Republican Party today as a radical insurgency that has abandoned parliamentary po politics. That you can see it in the last... Uh, ever since the Obama election. And Mitch McConnell and others made it very explicit right off that they have only one policy. Ruin the country as much as possible, hope that people will blame it on the Democrats, and then maybe we can get power back again and we can uh, follow our program of dedicating ourselves with utter servility to the needs of the very rich in the corporate sector. Well. Now, of course, in order to gain votes, they can't say that. So what they've done is mobilize the sectors of the population that have always been there, but have never really been politically mobilized, like uh, evangelical Christians uh, and nativists who are afraid that uh, they are taking our country away from us, uh, and white racists. And, you know, uh, uh, 
gun people who are so terrified that they have to carry their guns into church because maybe somebody will come after them. You know, these sectors of the population are there, and that's now the base of the Republican Party. It was very striking to watch the primaries, the electoral primaries, and one after another person came out from the base, each one crazier than the last. You know, Backman, Cain, you know, Santorum, all raving lunatics. The Republican establishment was frightened, and they poured money in to try to destroy them. And they managed to knock them down and get one of their own men in, Romney, you know, kind of establishment Republican, but only by undermining the base. And they're facing it again right now. Uh, the base that they've organized, and had to organize because the their commitments are so far to the right. Uh, has is no, they can't. They're having a hard time keeping it under control. I mean, I don't want to draw analogies too closely, but it has some similarity to what happened in Germany in the 1930s. I'm not, I'm not the only one to point this out. Incidentally, it's leading German historians have pointed it out. 